Hi everybody, I want to go through some of the features of primates for your chapter 9 in your lab. So we're going to be talking about all of the different groups on your classification sheet today. We're going to start with um, these guys, which are the prosimian strepsirines that you have. We'll go through their specific features. All the other skulls on the table are anthropoid haplorines, but then we have to go down into further subcategories. This will be our platyrine, our new world monkey. This will be our catarine cercopithecoid, which is our old world monkey. And this will be our catarine hominoid, which is our old world ape. So we'll go through some of the eye and dental features that you have on your worksheets just to make sure that you understand all of these features that you'll be using. Okay, so we're gonna start by looking at a non-primate. We're gonna be looking at this coyote because I wanna point out some features First of all, you can see here that he does not have any protection of his eye. The eye is therefore not really important to this animal. His primary sense is going to be a sense of smell. You can see a really long snout here, and it is a snout because the nose sticks out the furthest on the face, okay? So here we have sense of smell, not really um, any importance on vision. When we move into the primates, the primates are mammals who start to uh, really use vision over smell. And so we have our primitive prosimian strepsirines here that are kind of in the middle between something like a dog and a later primate. So on this lemur skull, lemurs have a slight protection of the eye in the form of a post orbital bar. So you have this uh, written down here, your post orbital bar. It's this ring around the eye. It's not fully protected because I can still jab the eye here. There's still an opening, but there's a ring at least covering the eyeball. The eyes are also a little bit still on the side, kind of like the dog. They're not all the way to the front, but they're getting there. Lemurs and other prosimian strepsirines can also have a little bit of a retention of a snout. So they have, again, that nose sticking out a little bit further, and that's because they're still using sight and smell together. The other um, identifying feature of a prosimian strepsirine you could tell from a skull is gonna be this tooth comb or dental comb. When you look at the mandible, you can see that the incisors, there's six of them, they're fused together and they stick straight forward, okay? That is a comb that they use to actually um, groom. And so this is a unique feature. This was the original feature in primates. All the other anthropoid haplorines are gonna lose this feature. So if you see a tooth comb or a post-orbital bar, you know you're dealing with a prosimian strepsirine. Okay, so as I said, everything else on the table is going to be your anthropoid haplorines. And on your classification chart that you're going to fill in as you go through the PowerPoint, you're going to realize that there are a lot of different types of anthropoid haplorine. The one feature that identifies all anthropoid haplorines is that they are fully using their vision. Everyone's eyes are forward facing, right? Everybody's is uh, directly in front close together. They also have what is called post-orbital closure. You're gonna see this on every single label that I have because all anthropoid haplorines have this. What this means is if I look at the skull, there is complete closure and protection. Everywhere I go on the skull, that eye is protected and the eye is pushed back. So even if I get hit in the front, that eye is not going to be damaged. Secondly, they also have lost the snout. When you're looking at these labels, you're also going to see this term, prognathic. Prognathic means instead of having a snout where your nose is the farthest thing forward, if you turn to the side, the teeth or jaws stick farther out than the nose. So every single one of these anthropoid haplorines is also going to be prognathic because their teeth are forward, more forward than the nose. The nose is set far back because we don't really use smell as much as we use vision. 
The other main thing that you're going to want to look at for primate uh, groups is going to be dentition. Very, very important. Here we have our anthropoid haplorine subgroup, platyrine. They are known for having the dental formula of 2133. That means they have an extra premolar. The way that you want to count this is you're going to start in between the front teeth, right in the middle. You're going to count how many incisors, there's two, how many big canine, one, and then if we can zoom in, you count the premolars and the molars, okay? So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? So that means it's two, one, three, three. That is a defining feature of the platyrine. For the catarines, which are your old world primates, either monkeys or apes, they have a dental formula of 2123. That is our dental formula as well. You would do the same thing. I'm going to use this bonobo because it's a little bit bigger. You start in between the front teeth. There's 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so all catarines have that dental formula. So the final two classes of primates you have are going to be whether the old world primate is a monkey or an ape. If it's a monkey, it's going to be a cercopithecoid. You can tell it's a monkey by its molar. The molar it has is a bilophodont molar. That means it has four even cusps on its molar. I'm going to try to zoom in on the molar. If you can't see, I've provided a lot of photos in your lab and in your lab manual, you can see this as well. But basically, if you look at the back molars, they have two rows of two cusps, meaning there's four even points on their molars. That is a bilophodont molar. For your old world apes, these are your hominoids. The way you can tell a hominoid from a skull is they have a Y5 molar. There are five points or cusps with a little Y-shaped um, kind of river running through it. It's kind of a little Y-shaped line. So if we look here at this bonobo skull, you can see on this back molar how there are five different points and you can kind of see that Y-shaped line that runs down the middle. Okay. So Y5 molars is what's going to make your um, hominoid ape. Again, if um, any of these features are a little hard to see, um, I'm just trying to kind of show you in real time. You have several handouts on this. You have your photos in your book. Um, during lab class, we can also talk about it. I can pull up those photos and really show you in detail. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of extra help in looking at these features on real skulls.